Good morning to you all. I, this is Vanita Srivastava, stand before you all to teach you all about the revolt of 1857, which is the first chapter of history. We all know that the revolt of 1857 was a very remarkable revolt. There were many causes. First, we are going to discuss about the political causes. Then there was religious and social causes, economic causes, and lastly, military causes. First, we are going to discuss about the political cause. Among that, the first one was the doctrine of lapse. Doctrine of lapse was given by Lord Dalhousie. According to him, if any emperor dies before giving any natural hire, then the whole empire will go into the hands of the Britishers. According to this doctrine, Sattara, Jhansi and Nagpur went into the hands of the Britishers. Then second one was discourtesy to the Mughal emperor. Lord Dalhousie announced that on the death of the king, the successor would have to leave the imperial palace. They won't be allowed to live in the, that palace and later on they were not allowed to use the titles also. Treatment meted out to Nana Sahib is the third point. Now, the Lord Dalhousie refused to give the pension to Nana Sahib because he was the adoptive son of Peshwa Baji Rao too. This was very much resented by the people and very greatly resented by the Nana Sahib. Fourth point is the annexation of Avat. Annexation of Avat was done by the Britishers on the pretext of maladministration. This was very much resented by the people. The people's sentiments were very much hurt. Then the second point we come to the religious and social causes. The, in the religious and social causes, first point is that the people were very much fearing that they will, will be mass conversion of the, the Indians into Christianity. Second, laws that interfere with the religion and customs of the people. The Britishers were thinking, they were leading, trying to lead the people, Indians to the modern and they were very much believing in the sati and not having the widow remarriage. Introduction of the railways and telegraphs was done by the Britishers for the development of the country for their own benefits but they were thinking that it is being interrupted, it is interrupting in their religious sentiments. Then indignities hurled at Indians and fifth point is fear regarding English education. In the English education, they were thinking that all they are teaching their culture, the Britishers are teaching their culture, and the pundits and Malvis who were teaching the Indian children, now they were out of their jobs. Next, we come to the economic causes. The ruin of trade and handicrafts. The British rulers deliberately crippled the Indian arts and crafts heavy duties on Indian silk and cotton textiles destroyed the Indian industries. Second, impoverishment of the cultivators, the permanent settlement, the Mahalwari system and made the farmers poorer. Already money lenders were making them poor but now these all system which came into being has made them poorer. India reduced to an agricultural colony of the British now all the cultivation was done, whatever produce was there, it was being exported to the Britain. The inhuman treatment meted to the indigo cultivators. If the farmers were uh, refusing to cultivate indigo, they were very much brutally beaten. 
then loss of livelihood all the indians they lost their livelihood and the big famines two big famines took place for which the britishers did not take any step next we come to the military causes in the military of the britishers britishers were there as the soldiers but the maximum uh, people were of the indians indians people were the soldiers they were working in the army of the britishers low salary and poor prospects of promotion so indian soldiers were giving given very less salary and they were having very less prospects of promotion then faulty distribution of troops the better positions were given to the better posting was given to the britishers and indian uh, soldiers were given very poor places to work disproportion between indian and british troops then social distance between british officers and indian soldiers discontent and disaffection in the bengal army loss of prestige in afghan war now in the loss of prestige in afghan war what happened the britishers were very much very badly defeated by the afghan soldiers now general service enlistment act was also there according to which the indians were supposed to work at any place in the overseas any place they have they were supposed to go and work but it was a taboo for the indians so they rejected it the immediate cause that was the introduction of the enfield rifle this was the basic it was a spark which was given by mangal pande because the grease cartridges were came and they were supposed to open the upper portion by the mouth and it was there was a rumor that it is covered with cow fat or pig fat so it has badly hurted the sentiments of the indians especially the hindus and muslims both now the revolt took place after that we saw that the, in the revolt of 1857 the indians were defeated but what were the causes of their failure lack of coordination among the leaders though the many people many emperors they fought from the different region but they were not well coordinated they did not well planned it lack of efficient leadership the people were not very the senapatis you can say the commanders they were not very good leaders as compared to the british army superior equipment and resources of the british the britishers were having better equipments better guns whereas the uh, indians were not having so nice the war was localized it is a very important factor in it was not they have not taken the whole india as their own country they have they were patriotic only towards their own region results and consequences of the war end of company's rule and changes introduced in the administrative setup we all know that the britishers they came as a trader to the india they it was a company east india company which came they have ruled and because of that now you see that there was a great revolt so the from the hands of the british company it came the whole administration came to the hands of the uh, british crown that is queen victoria the act of 1858 transferred the government of india from the company to the crown company's board of control and the court of directors were completely abolished the secretary of state was to be assisted by india council of 15 members appointment to the civil services were to be made by open competition under rules made by the secretary of state in the council policy towards the indian princes and chiefs the british government would not annex the indian states first point they said that they will not annex the indian states all the treaties that the princes had concluded with the company would be honored whatever treaties are signed will be duly honored by the crown the, their rights of adoption and succession were also recognized then comes the reorganization of the army 
the proportion of the british to indian soldiers was increased now the british soldiers were more compared to the indian soldiers artillery and other effective weapons of warfare were reserved for the british troops in india now the better, better uh, artillery was not given to the indian soldiers all key positions in the army were reserved exclusively for the british solemn promises made to the people of india queen victoria in her proclamation of 1858 promised not to interfere with the religious beliefs of the people especially the sati or whatever customs are prevalent they won't uh, interfere in the religion matter equal treatment to all her subjects indians and europeans the proclamation ended with the promise that the material and the moral advancement of the people would henceforth be the main concern of the government policy of divide and rule the british policy was to pacify the chiefs and the princes of the native states they were being converted to loyal supporters of the british raj in this way they have created a gulf between the rich and the poor people economic exploitation the numbers of englishmen in india both private individuals and members of services increased india became a dumping ground for goods manufactured in england whatever good raw material they were taking and the goods whatever were manufactured they were being sold in india so india became a dumping ground there was a rapid rise in the indebtedness of the peasants under the british rule because the peasants were they became very very poor so they became very much indebted the british invested the surplus capital in india in railways coal mines jute mill shipping etc last we come to the rise of nationalism in india revolt of 1857 has given a great patriotic feeling among all the indians the popular songs in praise of tantya tope the rani of jhansi and other kept the memory of their heroic deeds alive thank you